long ago, in Wales, near Lake Bala, there lived a woman with great magical power. Her name was Ceridwen. She lived with her husband, Tegid, and they had two children together, twins, one boy and one girl. The girl, Crowy, was beautiful. The boy, Morfran, was not. In fact, Morfran was shockingly ugly. And not only that, he was incredibly dim-witted. Ceridwen loved her son all the same, but worried about him. She wanted for him to have a good life, so decided to use her magic to help him. She concocted a potion in her magical cauldron that, when finished, should grant him great wisdom. If he was not to be a handsome man, then she wanted him to be a brilliant, inspiring one. She had hopes for him becoming a talented and respected bard. Once the ingredients were together and the cauldron was bubbling, she called upon a local peasant boy named Guion. Little Guion, it is now your job to take care of this cauldron. It will take one year and a day for the brew to be complete. You must stir it and feed the fire every day until then. Guion nodded. Good boy, Caridwen said, and placed her hand on his shoulder. The nature of the magic potion that Caridwen had created was that only the first three drops of it would be effective. Guion tended to the cauldron for a year and a day, as he was instructed. On the last day, he stirred the mixture as usual, but as he did so, he accidentally splashed three drops of the liquid onto his hand. The boiling heat of it made him instinctively raise his hand to his mouth, and as soon as the drops hit his tongue, he was overcome with wondrous knowledge. He knew that Caridwen would be enraged, and so fled as fast as he could. Caridwen spotted him running and gave chase. Guion, come back here! The potion was more powerful than even Caridwen had realised, and as Guion ran, he imagined himself as a hare and transformed into one. That potion was for my son! Caridwen shouted, and, being a master of transformation herself, she turned herself into a greyhound to outrun him. She was gaining on him as they reached a lake. Guion jumped into the air and landed in the water, having transformed himself into a salmon on the way down. Caridwen became an otter and dived in after him. Guion swam upwards back towards the surface, and just as Caridwen was reaching out to grab him, he leapt out and flew away as a crow. As he flew, he turned his head to see Caridwen still in pursuit as a hawk. She ascended onto him and dug her talons into his back. He had been caught. He looked down to see they were above a mill and had an idea. Caridwen saw a single grain of wheat fall from her talons down towards the earth. This was Guion. She dived after it as quick as she could, but it was too late. He landed amongst the thousands and thousands of identical grains. Caridwen landed onto them in the form of a hen and closed her eyes. Using her magic, she knew exactly which grain was Guion and ate him up. A short while later, Caridwen found herself pregnant. She spoke to her husband, Tegid. It's him, I know it. Guion grows within my womb. When he is born, I know it must be done. She was prepared to kill the baby. Months later, the baby was born, but Caridwen could not bring herself to do it. He is a beautiful baby boy. She sighed. She laid the baby in a leather skin bag and sewed it shut. She walked to the coast and cast him into the sea. <laughs>